Okay, so this has been one of the most common asked questions that I've gotten on my YouTube channel and also just me being a broker as well. Is it possible to become a part-time real estate agent working another job and still make really good money? Well, for those of you that are already real estate agents, we're gonna talk about if it's actually smart to be quitting your job and how to make that transition from a part-time agent into a full-time agent. And if you aren't already a real estate agent, but clicking on this video because you're interested in what real estate agents do and all that fun stuff, well, you found a great channel. So go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and check out this video on how to become a realtor and stay tuned to the end because I'm going to bring up some really good points about how to make money as a part-time agent and what kind of expectations you should have before going through the whole course and then getting licensed and throwing away about $1,500 to become a licensed agent. So one of the biggest things about becoming a real estate agent in the first place is you're going to be completely left in the dark. I say that almost in every single realtor video that I make, but once you become licensed, you're going to have no idea what you're doing. If you don't have a background in real estate, if you have a small background in real estate, you're coming from being an appraiser or maybe a lender or something like that, you might have a little bit of a glimpse of what you're doing, but for the most part, realtors are left in the dark. So you need to join a really good brokerage that offers a ton of support and a ton of training. And I am not talking about a Keller Williams. You do not need to throw away your entire split for their world premiere training programs or anything like that. You just need a good mentor, someone to take you on and work with you until you can become a full-time realtor or at least manage transactions on the side. Which brings us to our very first point, which is can you talk to clients while you're at your current job? Now I want you to think about it like this, and I'm pouring some water over here so it might sound a little bit weird. Are you working a job that requires you to be full attentive to that work 24 seven, to where you won't be able to pick up your own personal phone and make calls to clients and pick up calls from clients and so on and so forth? Because if you do, I wanna break the reality to you that being a realtor entails being on the phone almost 24 7. And now I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy and tell you eh, if you're working another job you can't become a part-time realtor and you'll never make money. I'm not trying to tell you anything like that. What I'm trying to simply make you aware of is that while you are a real estate agent and you're hustling to gain clients trust and gain clients in general, you're gonna have to talk to a lot of people. And if you're working a job such as like a dental hygienist or something like that, then you're not gonna really be able to pick up your phone and sneak away from your current full-time job to be able to talk to other clients. And that's not really recommended in the first place because you wanna put your full effort into your main job that's producing income right now. So understand that if you're gonna get into real estate, whether it's part-time or full-time, you're gonna have to be in your phone a lot making calls to other people and taking calls from other people. And to take it even further, if you really want to expand on the whole realtor career, can you go part-time and be flexible with your current full-time job? If you're looking to make a transition into real estate to have more of an income and more freedom to spend time with your family and to just travel and do whatever you want, because you can with real estate, then you're gonna have to think about that transition. And on top of that, another thing that you need to think about is, is it going to be a conflict of interest from your current job? Now, this was a huge case for me. If anyone doesn't know my story, go check out this video up here. However, when I was transitioning from a full-time banker in Capital One to becoming a full-time real estate agent, my manager hated it. And it was actually a complete conflict of interest that I was a realtor in the first place because I would always sneak away into the bathroom to take calls from sellers and buyers to start closing deals. Okay, now you're probably like, Austin, I can do that, I'm dedicated, I'm tired of hearing you say that stuff. Now, how do I actually become a part-time realtor? You know, what is it gonna look like once I get clients? Because how am I gonna show them properties? It's actually very, very simple. So let's say you've spent your hours and you finally got that for sale by owner list agreement signed on the weekend after hours and you're so excited you're like yes this is a seven thousand dollar commission or whatever it might be and you're ready to list their house now the client calls you continuously during your work, what do you do? Well, you need to set the correct expectations before you go into work or before you get preoccupied with something at your other job to make sure that if he needs anything that you're gonna be available in the next few hours that you're currently working with clients. Another tip to set up is your voicemail. Set up your voicemail and auto text responder so that way you don't have to spend too much time in your phone and clients know that if they're calling you and you're not answering that you will call them back right away but you're working with another client and you're trying to serve as many people as you can and don't just let it go to one of those automatic dialers that are so annoying and people can't leave messages or anything like that because i promise you especially if you're a new real estate agent whoever you're working with buyer or seller they're going to be calling you non-stop because you're most likely not going to be setting the correct expectation now on the flip side of that sellers are pretty easy to manage because you don't really have to go to their house too many times when i was selling real estate 
full time before I transitioned into a real estate broker and real estate investor, I was making two trips to every single seller's property. And I was doing about five to seven listings every single month on average. But if you have a buyer client, it gets a little bit more challenging because think about it. The inventory is very low right now because of COVID and the interest rates at an all time low. When buyers call you, they want to see that property. Now we're in 2020. Everyone wants everything instantly. If you have a buyer and they found a property and they have off on a day that you're currently working on, you need to be able to stop everything and go show them that property. But a workaround is if you're a part-time real estate agent, you can pay another showing agent, quote unquote, to be able to go show them that property. And again, to your client, you just let them know and set expectations correctly and tell them, hey, this person isn't going to be negotiating. There's simply a door opener for you. However, I tour every single property after you tour it if you tell me that you like it. So we're all on the same page. And as simple as that, you still can transact at a high capacity while being a part-time agent. Now talking about being a part-time realtor, regardless if you're working another job or not, it's actually pretty simple. The process is exactly the same as if you're a full-time realtor, you're just gonna simply have less time to educate yourself and to grow in the business because remember, it's all time versus money. So the more people you talk to, the more time you spend talking to people, the more transactions you're gonna do, the more money you're gonna make. It's as simple as that. When you're a part-time realtor, you need to spend all of your time self-educating yourself and making calls. A lot of mistakes that agents have when they become brand new agents is they don't distinguish what a money-making activity is and what wasting time is and so they go on all these coffee breaks they talk to all these lenders all these other real estate agents and they barely talk to clients which are the people that are gonna make them money so if I can give you one piece of advice that's gonna stick with you throughout this entire video it's to distinguish what's going to make you money and distinguish what's not going to make you money there's a lot of people especially as a new real estate agent they're gonna be attacking you left and right and trying to get you to meet with them for coffee to have lunch brokers are gonna call you lenders are gonna call you title companies are gonna call you because they all want your business they want you to send the contracts to them so they can get paid they want you to send the loan to her so she can get paid but that's not how you're going to get paid you are gonna get paid by talking to actual clients so you need to pick up the phone call for sale by owners or watch any of my other videos on how to generate leads and you need to spend every single hour self-educating yourself and dialing to make calls to talk to more people. So unlike being a full-time realtor, you're gonna have to spend all your hours hyper-focused onto those two activities. As a bonus, when you become a real estate agent in general, whether you're a part-time or full-time, you get to take advantage of becoming a real estate professional according to the IRS. And that means you get amazing tax write-off on your 1099 income. Even if you didn't make income, you can still schedule C and write off your money for your current part-time real estate gig. And it doesn't matter if you made a negative profit. Now think about it, it's actually really simple. Most businesses when they start out run out of loss for the first couple of years until they produce a profit. Now you can't sit there and lose money every single month because Uncle Sam's gonna be like, what the heck is going on with this guy? He needs to make some money and stop taking advantage of us. But in the beginning, if you do flop the first year, you can write off a ton of expenses off that's probably gonna save you or make you more money on your tax return for your other job anyway. So make sure to get a simple QuickBooks self-employed. It's $9.99 a month. Run your bank accounts through it and distinguish your personal from your business transactions so you can take advantage of the most money. And on top of that, you don't wanna get hit with a huge tax bill at the end of the year. So go ahead and talk to accountant if you start making good real estate money so that you know what to expect on your tax bill. Now that's pretty much all you actually really need to know to become a part-time real estate agent in the industry. And to be honest with you, it's not at all complicated. You are gonna be left in the dark in the beginning, but join a good team, subscribe to this channel for more tips on how to grow your real estate business because I'm coming out with videos consistently for you guys so you can start raising your income. And on top of that, you really just need to do it. Just go ahead and get your real estate license. Okay, so you're ready to quit your job and you're ready to transition into a part-time agent or a full-time real estate agent. Some tips for you are going to be as follows. Lower your spending habits. You don't know if you're gonna continue getting paid. You could be on a solid good streak. It could keep going up, but it also could keep going down because you never know what happens. I've had months where I've lost 10 listings. Now I was still fine. I have money in the bank to support myself, but it was a scary moment because my income went down drastically. And had I have made huge purchases and not lived below my means, 
oh my god, it would have been a nightmare for me. So don't sign up for unnecessary debt. Now is not the time to be buying a car. If you want to transition and grow your business and develop real freedom and real income, then now is not the time to be going out to luxury dates and cruises and all that fun stuff. Now, when should you actually quit your job? That's a huge question. And it's one that I struggled with and I went, when I left the bank and uh, just went full time into real estate and quit college and everything like that. But here's what I've gathered to be the best possible situation for making the transition as smooth as possible. First off, you wanna make sure you have at least three to six months in reserves in case you don't close a commission. Remember, we're all commission based when you work in real estate. And if you're not closing deals or talking to clients, then you're not gonna be getting paid. And that's a little bit scary because you can go a long time in the beginning without a paycheck. I would highly recommend you to pay off all your credit card debt and all your revolving lines of debt, such as lines of credits, anything large and outstanding before you start to make a transition like this so you have something to at least rely on. Now to take it a step further, if you're super precautious about this and wanna make sure you have all your bases covered, then you can also apply for a new credit card to at least have something to float you on in case you don't close a deal. And there's two main things you wanna have whenever you're transitioning into a part-time or full-time realtor. And the first thing is you wanna have things in your pipeline. You wanna have transactions that are you're actively working on. Now, when I say actively working on, I mean they're under contract, not just buyers that are telling you that they wanna buy, because unless they're under contract and they've signed an agreement with the seller, you're not really close to making any money with them because they can disappear as fast as you found them. And the second thing you wanna rely on is you wanna make what you're making in your current full-time job before you quit it if you're currently making 50,000 a year before you think about even quitting or giving your two weeks notice you need to be making at least 50 or 60,000 as a real estate agent before making that transition okay so anyways guys I hope you like this video I hope it taught you something new don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will catch you guys on the next one